Is it wise to get married after a year of dating, or is it better to wait a little longer? This is not an easy decision, especially when you think that this person is your soulmate. But fate can be unpredictable. Maybe sometimes it's better to hold off on marriage until you're absolutely sure. Luke Wallen was known to a wide range of people for his warm and friendly behavior. Anyone who knew him could confirm this without hesitation. He always smiled good-naturedly, was a good listener, and offered words of support when someone needed it. A quick mind, a good sense of humor, and a sharp intellect. All these traits aroused admiration in him. But those who were close to Luke also knew better than to push his buttons. Although he could usually tolerate a lot, when he reached the limit, his anger could be very strong. Few people saw this side of him, but those who did knew that one had to be careful with him. Luke openly admitted this to himself, often commenting, Yes, I'm dealing with this problem. Instead of spending a fortune on college tuition, Luke decided to work as a mechanic while taking evening classes at a local community college to earn a degree in business. His ultimate goal was to open his own machining business, focused on creating high-quality stainless steel equipment needed for use in various fields of medicine. It was at one of these courses that Luke met Willow Larson. Willow's parents believed that she should go with the flow of life and accept any fate. But Willow herself realized the great importance of education for building a decent life. She decided to take business courses, intending to start selling pharmaceuticals immediately after graduation and earn a solid income. Her talent for sales was obvious. With her charming smile, piercing blue eyes, grace, and stunning physique, Willow easily attracted the attention of others. One rainy evening after class, she crossed paths with Luke. Luke kindly offered Willow his umbrella as they walked together to the parking lot. As they huddled together under the umbrella, Willow couldn't help but be struck by Luke's appearance. He was tall, sturdy, with long blonde hair and red stubble on his beard. As they walked through the rain, Willow thought, Wow, he looks like a Norman deity. Luke was fascinated by Willow's mesmerizing voice, her charming smile, charismatic personality, and stunning figure, which delighted him. He treasured every second of their walk together, thinking about how to prolong the magic of their meeting. But as he did not know himself, his fears turned out to be groundless. By the time they got to Willow's car, she had already set up a lunch date for him the next day and invited him to attend a cozy party on Friday night. Dinner date proved their compatibility in character and hobbies, but it was the spark they felt that Friday night that strengthened their bond. Soon they became practically inseparable from each other, meeting four or five times a week. They were connected by a love of active recreation, hiking, cycling, tennis, and kayaking, but simple pastime together, joint dinners, and passionate, sensual lovemaking until late at night brought no less pleasure. Luke was sure that Willow was his only one, and he couldn't wait to live with her for the rest of his life. Willow felt the same way, and they both decided to get married with the financial support of her parents. They chose the usual church ceremony, followed by a banquet for 100 guests. The celebration included an open bar, dinner, DJ, and dancing. Luke's parents, who lived far away, had a limited budget, so they could not actively participate in the preparation of the wedding. But they allocated $5,000 to pay for the bar and buy a tuxedo for Luke. Luke chose Todd, his older brother, as best man at the wedding, and also invited his longtime friends Jack Nichols and Dennis Long. Willow chose her best friend Linda Miller as her bridesmaid, as well as Brenda Johnson and Molly Webster. Todd, who lived very close to Luke, was not only his brother, but also a close friend. Todd, a sturdy, tall bricklayer, kept himself in great shape. Throughout the working day, he lifted and laid bricks, masonry, and landscape blocks. Before the wedding, Todd, along with his wife Evie, who was pregnant with their second child at the time, invited Luke to visit them after work. When Luke pulled up in his Harley, Todd met him with a baby monitor in his hands. He greeted his brother and asked how he was doing. 
Have you thought about how to get rid of this dangerous motorcycle once you marry Willow? We don't want her to take care of a vegetable for the rest of her married life, do we? Asked Todd. Let's put aside talking about the motorcycle for now, buddy. I need it to relieve stress, especially in the chaos that reigns around the wedding preparations. It seems to me that I can't say much, and I'm not privy to most of the details. All I know is that I'm in charge of the open bar, and they do everything else except our tuxedos. Have they fitted your tuxedo yet? You might need custom tailoring, unless they've recently outfitted a football team, Luke said. Haha, -ha, very funny. I'll take the measurements next week. In the meantime, I'm racking my brain for ideas for your lavish bachelor party with Dennis and Jack. And how are you and Willow doing? Everything is going smoothly, and lately our bond has become stronger than ever, Luke replied. Willow just can't seem to stop. She explains this with pre-wedding nerves, stating that intimacy is her main source of relaxation. And who am I to object? Luke explained. But it's too much for me. I am in a difficult situation. I have a two-year-old child who constantly worries me, and my wife, who is eight months pregnant and is experiencing stress. I absolutely don't need to hear about your antics in the bedroom right now. I can barely keep my balance, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to be with my wife so she doesn't get too tired. Todd replied, Todd, this is too much. You've crossed a line that no future married guy wants to hear. But don't worry, in just 18 years you'll have a lot of free time to relive your youth with your wife, like Willow and I did last weekend, Luke teased Todd. That's enough. I would like to ask you to do something for me, Todd replied. Todd handed Luke the two-piece baby monitor he had brought with him. This thing has stopped working, he grumbled. I even changed the batteries in it, but I don't understand what's the matter. But you are our host, and I know that you can fix anything. So I thought about it and decided that before buying a new one, I should ask you. No problem, Luke replied. I'll be home early. There's probably no one there yet, so I can take a look at her right now. Luke got on his Harley and drove away. He and Willow rented a two-bedroom house. Having driven the motorcycle into the garage, he parked it under the rear overhang in anticipation of the predicted rain. When he entered the house, it became clear to him that Willow had not returned yet. He quickly connected the main monitor to the wall and went down to the basement, where he installed a simple workbench. There, he examined the portable receiver and immediately discovered a problem, a broken wire going to the speaker. In just five minutes, Luke rewired the wire and everything worked again. After finishing his work, he heard the door opening upstairs through the baby monitor. Recognizing Willow's voice as she entered, he realized she was on the phone. Eavesdropping through the monitor, he clearly heard her end of the conversation and realized that the issue had been resolved satisfactorily. Just as he was about to go upstairs, he heard Willow say, Dennis, Luke is not at home right now and he probably won't be back for an hour. Can you take me somewhere private so we can be alone? Willow pleaded. The wedding is just around the corner and our opportunities to be together are dwindling. Please hurry up and fulfill my wish. Luke didn't hear Dennis's reply, but Willow's words knocked the wind out of him, causing him to stumble and fall. This can't be happening. How could she have thought of betraying me with a supposedly good friend of mine just four weeks before our wedding? This is unbearable, Luke thought to himself. His attention returned to their conversation when he heard Willow say, no, Dennis, I'm not ruling out the possibility of continuing the relationship after the wedding. It takes time to think about it. Now I'm not against this idea, because our feelings are not based on love, but only on physical attraction. I allow myself a little freedom before tying the knot. But if we still want to continue this, we must be careful and circumspect. I can't let Luke find out the truth. It will devastate him, and I'm afraid of hurting him so much. I love him too much. After a moment of silence, Willow added, Okay, Dennis, I'll be waiting for you outside. Pick me up and we'll meet again in the back seat. I will gladly satisfy you again. Luke was stunned. Then he heard Willow running out the door. 
The future he had imagined with her, full of love, children, and development, was destroyed in an instant. He couldn't believe Willow was capable of cheating, especially at such a fateful moment in their relationship before the wedding, when their mutual passion was at its peak. He thought, she'll get tired of me soon. She will go to other men every week. I can't go on like this when I have a woman I love and there is no trust between us. With a heavy heart, he climbed the stairs. Looking out the window, he saw his former friend Dennis Long driving up in his red Mustang. Willow excitedly ran to the car, jumped on the seat and kissed Dennis, after which they drove down the street. Anger gripped Luke as he watched them drive away. Without hesitating for a second, he rushed into the garage, grabbed a tire iron and quickly got on his Harley. He followed them at a reasonable distance, determined to find out the truth about Willow's actions. After passing several street intersections, they entered the county highway leading out of town. The city had a huge park with hilly slopes and a lake, where various parking lots were located. Luke and his friends were familiar with a secluded place, closed on three sides by trees, which was reached by a winding road skirting a forest area. Luke was sure that was where Dennis was going. He stopped by the side of the road, waited ten minutes to recover, and give them a head start to observe how far his unfaithful bride could go. Eventually, he reached the turnoff to the parking lot, parked the motorcycle in the parking lot, and began to make his way through the crowns of the trees surrounding the parking lot until he found the place where Dennis was staying. Pulling out his camera, he began recording, quietly making his way to the back of the car. The sounds Willow was using to trick him were unmistakable. When he picked up the phone, capturing the scene outside the window, Willow suddenly stopped and urgently asked, Do it, Dennis, I want it! Luke's anger boiled over. He abruptly got to his feet and shouted out the window, You're crazy! His outburst disabled Willow and Dennis, who were in a compromising position. Willow, lying on her back, begged Dennis, Oh my God, no, no, Dennis, stop it, this is crazy, you can't do this. Luke understood her feeble attempts to deflect the blame from herself. Dennis tried to explain to Luke through the window, Luke, it's not what you thought. There's nothing wrong with that. She loves you, not me. It's just a harmless pre-wedding entertainment. Luke couldn't hold back his emotions anymore. With a cry of pain, he raised the tire iron over his head and smashed the rear window. Dennis was about to open the door when he was interrupted by Luke's scream. If you open the door and go outside, you're in serious trouble, Luke warned, his eyes filled with rage. Dennis realized that his life was in danger if he left the safety of the car. Without hesitating for a second, Luke began circling around the car, smashing the windows with a tire iron. The safety glass shattered into many sharp shards, sparkling in the sunlight. With each step, he tore off the mirrors and hit the headlights. Going around to the other side of the car, Luke ran the tire iron over its surface, peeling off the ruby-red paint and exposing the bare metal underneath. With a quick movement, he smashed the rear side window into splinters, then turned his attention back to Dennis. Dennis tried to pull away, but Luke managed to open the door and pulled Dennis out by his hair. Luke gave Dennis a few hard punches. Willow huddled in the back seat, as far away from the open door as possible, her eyes full of anxiety and guilt as she looked at Luke. Between sobs, she begged him to stop. Please, Luke. Forgive me. Please forgive me, she begged. It doesn't mean anything. Please, we have to stay strong. Get through this and get married, baby. I only love you. Dennis is just a toy. He really doesn't mean anything to me. Honey, take me home and I'll prove to you that I only love you. Luke's face expressed disgust as he looked at Willow and then at Dennis. You're a disgrace, Willow, and you, Dennis, are no better. He growled. I am shocked that you would betray me like this. Sleep with my fiancé, pretend to be a friend, and think that you deserve to attend my wedding. This is a big mistake. I never want to see any of you again in my life, otherwise I will try to make you regret it. He growled with contempt in his voice. How could you betray me like that? 
I thought our love was indestructible, but now I see that it was just a facade. I can't even bear to look at you. Just don't come near me. Willow began to cry, her heart bursting with pleading. Luke, please don't. Give me a chance to explain everything. I love you. I belong to you. Please don't leave me. Luke said, I really only loved you, Willow. I don't want to hear any more excuses. With that, he returned to the motorcycle and drove off into the distance. Turning around, he saw Willow on her knees, tears streaming down her face, and she was covering her eyes with her hands. Meanwhile, Dennis continued to lie on the ground surrounded by broken glass and splinters of paint from his beloved Mustang. From Luke was racing his Harley, and his destination remained a mystery as he sped down the road. It took some time, but eventually he came to his senses and found himself at his brother Todd's house. Todd heard the sound of a motorcycle and, opening the door, saw Luke sitting on the steps, tears streaming down his face, as if his whole world had collapsed. When Luke poured out his heart to Todd, the older brother sat down next to him, hugged Luke, and just said, Wow. I'm amazed, little brother, this is a difficult situation. I would never have thought that such a thing could happen. It's amazing how we completely misjudged Willow's character and didn't see such guile in her. I'm really sorry, Luke. If I come across Dennis, I will make sure that he is responsible for his actions, especially since you have already had to deal with him. I think we should be glad that you found out about this now, and not a few years after the wedding. I advise you to cancel the wedding now. It's a much wider choice than going through a painful divorce later, especially if the children suffer. Avoiding a potential disaster is definitely preferable to facing it head on. So, what should we do next? Todd said. One thing is for sure, there is no need to prepare for the wedding, and I will definitely inform Jack about it. I will also call our parents and inform them to cancel their travel plans. I'm not going to marry a woman who betrayed my trust even before we exchanged vows. I have a strong feeling that my marriage is doomed to fail, and I refuse to spend my life constantly worrying about whether my wife is cheating on me and trying to justify infidelity for purely physical, not emotional reasons, is ridiculous," Luke replied. At that moment, Luke's phone buzzed, highlighting several missed calls and a voice message from Willow, as well as a missed call from an unknown number. He ignored Willow's call and sent it to voicemail. Just as he was about to turn off the phone, he received a call from an unknown number. He answered cautiously, Hello? Is this Luke Wallen? A voice asked from the phone. Yes, but who are you interested in? This is Gerard from the 4th Precinct. We have received a report of assault and property damage from a certain Dennis Long, in which he accuses you as a criminal. You need to report in the next half hour, otherwise I will issue a warrant for your arrest and put you on the wanted list. A patrol car is already waiting for you at the house. It is in your best interest to cooperate and come to the interrogation. Luke looked at Todd and muttered softly, Damn, I'm in trouble. He then replied to the policeman, Okay, officer, I'll be there soon. Should I bring a lawyer with me? The officer replied, In general, today you will have a meeting with the judge, and you will decide for yourself whether you need a lawyer. But given the severity of the damage to the car, and the fact that Dennis Long was hospitalized with his jaw clamped, it is advisable that a lawyer be present with you. If you have a lawyer, come to the station with him. If not, it will be provided to you. But don't delay it. Todd overheard the conversation and quickly called his friend Mikey, whom he had known since high school. Mikey, my brother is in trouble for assault and property damage. He'll be at the 4th Precinct in 30 minutes. Can you drive up there and help him? Todd nodded at Luke, promising, I'll be there to help as soon as they figure it out. Let Mikey do the talking. Stay calm as a cucumber and we will believe that you will avoid trouble with the law. You should have just recorded the video and left, saving your revenge for later. But I understand this impulse. If I were you, I could lose my temper and crash Dennis's car. But let's not get hung up on hypotheses. We are in this situation now and we need to find a solution. The next morning, Todd went to pick up his brother from the station. After spending the night in custody, Luke appeared before a judge the next morning. As expected, 
he was informed that he could post bail in the amount of $10,000 or continue to remain in custody. Mikey offered Luke to apologize to Dennis, make amends and pay for the sick leave, but Luke stubbornly refused. When Luke returned home, he found that Willow was no longer there. He packed up his things and moved into the guest bedroom at his brother's house. Before leaving, he also took the baby monitor, joking to his brother, It works great. Maybe she kept me out of trouble. A week has passed, and Luke still hasn't answered Willow's calls and voicemails. He listened with horror to the excuses and understatements in her messages, in which she did not realize the depth of the situation. At first, she claimed that Dennis was using her for his own purposes, stating that she only planned to kiss him one last time before completely giving herself to Luke as a devoted wife. But he knew that wasn't the case, judging by their phone conversation. In other messages, she claimed that Dennis was of no value to her, although she admitted that she had met him before. She felt anxious and unsure that she was going to devote her life to the only man, hinting at the desire to have one last affair in order to say goodbye to an unmarried life. Despite her assurances that she would be faithful when they were married, Luke was not at all convinced by her excuses. In the last message, she asked, Luke, our wedding is only three weeks away. Please, we need to discuss and decide everything. I love you, Luke, and I'm really sorry that I did that and hurt you. I'm also in unbearable pain, Luke, because I can't stand the thought of losing you. I have drawn conclusions from my mistake, and I can give you my word that I will not cheat on you from now on. Please, Luke, don't give up on our love. We have to get over this and get married anyway. Luke felt a surge of nausea at the thought of continuing their plans, but he knew he had to talk to her and her parents one last time about the possibility of canceling or rescheduling the wedding. Despite his love for her, he was torn between ending her forever and trying to save their relationship. Nevertheless, the upcoming wedding in three weeks was no longer possible. While he was thinking about how to bring up the subject, his thoughts were interrupted by Todd's doorbell. Luke was shocked to see Molly on the doorstep and greeted her. After learning the news, she hugged him tightly, expressing her sympathy. Pulling away, he couldn't help but notice her outfit. Molly was wearing the shortest shorts he'd ever seen. Sighing heavily, Luke suggested they go to the backyard and talk. When they were seated at the picnic table, he asked, Did Willow explain to you what happened? She nodded, confirming that she had been told the truth. Luke, Willow cares very much about you, and she's in a very bad way right now. She is tormented by the thought that her actions have brought you such pain and jeopardized the future that she imagines only with you. I'm here on her behalf to try to make things right. She wants you both to get this over with so that you can move forward without any lingering resentments before the wedding. At her request, I came here to make sure that you have fully compensated for your anger and are satisfied with it. And Luke, I'm very happy to do it, Molly said, winking and swinging her hips. But she completely misinterpreted the situation. Luke was furious that Willow had asked Molly to make love to him, believing that it would fix everything. Luke was disappointed that Molly agreed to something that didn't suit him, but she didn't seem to mind. Despite his emotional turmoil, he managed to smile at her. Molly, let me buy you a beer, I'll be right back. Luke said as he left, already thinking about how to use this situation to his advantage. Returning with the beer and taking a sip, he began to formulate a plan in which Molly was involved. Molly, I'm not sure if this is going to solve my problems, Luke admitted. One of my main problems is the upcoming trial, which is only a few weeks away. I could end up behind bars either before or after the wedding. Besides, there's not going to be a honeymoon, and I'm not allowed to leave town. You know about the assault charges and what I did to Dennis and his car, right? Molly nodded, her face showing shock and disbelief. Yes, Willow told me that you've turned into a real Rambo. This surprised her very much. No one could have imagined that you would snap like that. It's just not like you. Yes, my emotional wound and rage really got out of control, but I think you and Willow will help me deal with it, Luke said. Willow will do whatever you need and I'll help you too. Molly replied. 
Molly, the situation is such that my lawyer approached Dennis with a deal, offering to pay his car expenses and hospital bills in exchange for dropping the charges. But Dennis categorically refused this offer. Maybe you or Willow can change his mind. Perhaps if you come to him yourself, he will agree. It would be very important to me. Do you think you can try it, Molly? If Willow objects, it could mean that she really cares about Dennis. And in that case, maybe our relationship is really over. What do you think about it? I'd rather be with you than with Dennis. But if it helps mend the relationship between you and Willow, then I'm ready to do it. I've been dreaming of getting to know him better for a long time. Willow has always spoken positively about him. Luke flinched at the mention, realizing the implication it carried. The implication. But nevertheless, he suddenly stood up, hugged her, kissed her on the cheek, and asked her to tell him about it. After that, he texted Willow, saying that Molly would tell her about his plan for their future relationship, and he needed her thoughts on it. Meanwhile, at home, Willow told her longtime friend Linda about the uncertain state of affairs with the wedding. Linda, who had been friends with Willow since fourth grade, also became close to Luke and considered him a close friend. Linda burst out in anger. Willow, how could you do this to Luke? You promised me that you would stop promiscuous behavior as soon as you got engaged, and now you're telling me that you will stop as soon as you get married. I don't believe you. How can Luke trust you? Willow tried to explain. It was just a little fling to calm my pre-wedding stress, Linda. I panicked when faced with the idea of committing to monogamy for life and made a rash decision. At that moment, I didn't pay attention to the fact that I slept with Dennis until I saw how much it hurt Luke. His pain was palpable and it put a lot of pressure on me. Linda, Willow's longtime friend, couldn't help but notice that Willow was more worried about herself than about Luke and couldn't figure out that this wasn't the case. She felt guilty for getting caught, for the trouble she had caused Luke, and for the pain she had caused Dennis. But she did not repent of her actions. Linda was thinking, You're not worthy of a wonderful man like Luke. Despite her inner turmoil, Linda kept her thoughts to herself when Molly burst into the room with news of Luke's plan. After a short discussion, Willow and Molly decided to discuss the situation with Dennis. Willow confessed, Molly... You're going to have to deal with him yourself. Luke would never let me get involved in this again. Molly assured Willow, Don't worry, I'll make sure he doesn't get hung up on me. Willow then turned to Linda and suggested, Linda, it looks like you're going to have to sleep with Luke. This way he will perceive us as equals, and I will be able to convince him that our previous mistakes are behind us. Will you do this for me, Linda? You are my bridesmaid and my closest friend. I would have done the same for you if the situation had been reversed. Reluctantly, Linda agreed, but only on condition that Dennis drop the charges and the wedding would be played. Within two days, Molly and Dennis successfully completed their task, as a result of which Dennis withdrew the application. Meanwhile, Willow stubbornly continued to try to contact Luke leaving voice messages in which she claimed that she was to blame for the success of the plan and asked for forgiveness, hoping to continue preparations for the wedding. She also hoped that Linda would seduce her future husband. Luke was at a loss what to do next. He knew it would be wrong to marry Willow in such circumstances, but he cared about her, and he was thinking about trying her on himself. In addition, he felt guilty for the possible monetary losses that her family would suffer if he canceled the wedding. Damn it, Luke muttered, not knowing what to do. I have to listen to her position and understand why she did what she did, he thought to himself, reluctantly dialing her number and trying to contain his anger. She answered the phone. Dear, I am very sorry that everything turned out this way and that you are so worried about it. Please believe me when I say that you had nothing to do with this. You are my perfect partner, and I love you more than anything in the world. I want to become your wife and be devoted to you forever. I know it must hurt you, and I want to explain everything to you. Do you think, Willow, we can find a way to move on and make peace? I know this is not your first betrayal. Why did you do that? How many men has this happened to? 
How many times has this happened? Do our love and commitment, especially now that we're engaged, have no value to you? How can I trust you again, Willow? Luke answered. Unfortunately, with Dennis, Luke, it happened more than once, but for me it was pointless. It was just a way to say goodbye to the carefree bachelor days and the experiment before our wedding. Luke, I promise I won't make that mistake again. You mean everything to me and no one else can compare to how I feel when we're together. Don't worry about me. I've learned my lesson. Please believe me, Luke, Willow pleaded. Willow, the problem is that I find it hard to trust you. How could you do such a treacherous thing to me? You say you love me, but at the same time, you're dating someone else. What happens when you get tired of our marriage? How will I feel when you come home later without any explanation? I can't imagine how this is possible. Darling, my relationships with other men mean nothing compared to my love for you. All I want is to be with you. It shouldn't bother you. It's just a physical desire. It won't change what we have. It's a short-term satisfaction. And then I'll come to you again, my love. Please come home. I will confirm my love for you and show you the life we can live together. Willow, it's very hard for me. It seems that you intend to continue on this path. Do you want an open marriage? Luke, I love you and I want to be with you. Although I am not against an open marriage, my true desire is to be devoted only to you. Even if you don't agree to this and we decide to get married anyway, I promise to be a faithful wife. Willow, I feel devastated because of what you've done. My trust and love for you have been destroyed and it feels like my heart has been ripped out and thrown away. I feel incredibly confused right now. Every time you come to my mind, I can't help but think that you've been unfaithful to me. How does this betrayal relate to the promises we were supposed to make to each other on our wedding day? How many times has this happened? And how many more times will this happen in the future? No matter what you say in your defense, I find it hard to believe you. Willow, I need to move away before my anger consumes me and I say things that I'll regret later. I'll contact you later. Your actions have made me think about a lot of things. Luke hung up the phone, feeling depressed and confused. He went outside to clear his head and get some fresh air. Discussing the possibility of an open marriage with Willow destroyed his faith in the trust and fidelity between them. It became obvious that if they married, she would eventually betray him. This revelation was far from the perfect marriage he had imagined, and he felt cheated by Willow. With only a few weeks left until their wedding, he was gradually beginning to see Willow's true features and understand her true nature. When he became furious and despondent, a call from Linda interrupted his fall. Hey Luke, I'm going to Todd's. Would you like to take a ride with me? Linda asked. Luke sighed, deciding that this was just another ploy to reunite him with Willow. Despite his doubts, Linda was one of his closest friends, so he felt it necessary to trust her and listen to her opinion. Of course, Linda, I'll be right there, he replied. As they drove away from the curb, Luke talked about all the unpleasant events that bothered him, showed Linda the video, and expressed his confusion and concern about how to live on. Linda pulled into the supermarket parking lot, parked at a safe distance from other cars, and turned to face the hatch. Luke, I need to talk to you about something important. I want you to know that I cherish our friendship and sincerely admire the kind of person you are. Willow is making a huge mistake by cheating on you. She's selfish and only cares about herself, Linda said, and there was sincerity in her tone. She expects you to forgive her, despite her actions. She even suggested that I sleep with you so that things would get better between you. Linda, this is unbelievable. Luke reached for the car door, but Linda's scream stopped him in his tracks. Luke, you promised to listen to me until the end. Please give me a chance, she begged. He slammed the door and looked at her face. All right, Linda. Tell me how you think you can fix the situation between Willow and me. Luke... It was important to me that you knew what Willow was trying to do, but I would never do that to you. I respect you, myself, and our friendship too deeply to get involved in such a deceptive scheme. To be honest, I don't want you to get back together with Willow. 
She's only going to hurt you, and I can't see you going through this. My attitude towards you is outgrowing the boundaries of our friendship. I think I might fall in love with you. I'm not saying this to try to win you over. I just want you to know how special you are. After Willow, there will be other women, whether it's me or someone else, who will see what an amazing person you are. I'm telling you this so that you can see the possibilities of your future and not stay with Willow. Luke, she was unfaithful to you at all stages of your relationship, not just with Dennis. For her, being with other men is as insignificant as drinking or dancing with someone else. You may be dear to her, but she will never love you the way you deserve because she refuses to change. She will constantly lie and cheat, hoping for forgiveness if she is caught, and then repeat everything from the beginning. Luke, it's time to focus on her well-being and not worry about her family or the wedding guests. It's your decision. And remember, I will always support you no matter what choice you make. She started the car engine, and they drove in silence to Todd's house. When they arrived, she turned to Luke and said, Make a wise choice, Luke. Believe that there is someone who can love you the way you deserve. Luke saw tears in her eyes as she drove away. Two hours later, Luke was writing a letter while checking the list of 100 wedding guests. The letter was headed, Willow Larson. To all our dear friends, family, and cherished wedding guests, it was with great joy that we recently sent out invitations to our wedding, proclaiming the endless love and commitment between Willow and me. We have invited you to join us and celebrate the beginning of our journey together, not only as lovers, but also as support for each other, the closest confidants and companions for life. This, in my opinion, is the true essence of marriage. But recently I've discovered that Willow looks at things differently than I thought before. I hate to admit that Willow prefers an open relationship that she hasn't mentioned before. To my horror, I found out that Willow not only cheated on me with my close friend Dennis Long, but also had romantic relationships with many other men while we were dating and engaged. I found Willow and Dennis in a compromising situation, and despite the fact that I have confirmation of their infidelity, I decided not to expose them and not to lower myself by talking about it. But the betrayal that I saw was imprinted in my memory as a clear sign of deception and infidelity. It wasn't harmless flirting or harmless hugs, but outright physical actions that demonstrated a lack of respect for the purity of our relationship. I realized that Willow didn't really love me the way I deserved to be loved. I believe that a life partner should show respect, cherish our love as a precious gift, be honest and faithful, and share only the emotional and physical intimacy that deepens our marriage. I have always sought to offer my partner this level of commitment, and even more. It's quite obvious that Willow and I are not right for each other. It was with sadness and relief at the same time that I made the difficult decision to end our engagement, relationship, and wedding plans. I'm saddened by the loss of someone who was deeply dear to me, and if she felt the same way. But I also feel relieved that I learned early on that Willow and I have completely opposite views on relationships, and thus saved myself from many years of potential heartache. I am grateful that I was able to prevent a destructive marriage. I apologize to Willow's family, who may not be aware of her true nature and recent actions that led to this choice. I think Willow is the one who should apologize to everyone involved in this situation. I regret that I had to share this news in such a manner, especially after the kindness her family has shown me. But I think Willow needs to understand the importance of sincerity and responsibility for her actions. I will not allow myself to be perceived as a person who refused marriage, and therefore I consider it necessary to clarify the situation. To all those who are lucky enough to be in loving and respectful marriages, I deeply admire what connects you, and I hope one day to find such a connection for myself. For those who are free or planning a new relationship, I strongly recommend being careful and choosing partners wisely. And when you meet the right person, give them respect, love, trust, and loyalty. With warm regards, Luke Vallon. As expected, a massive invasion began immediately after the letter was sent. 
Willow's parents furiously called Luke and warned him about a possible lawsuit to recover the down payment for wedding plans. In response, Luke stated, Did you teach Willow that loyalty and devotion have no value in marriage? Is this what you do in your own relationship? And do you approve of Willow's actions? Maybe it's you or Willow who should be responsible for a failed wedding and money losses, but it definitely shouldn't be on me. It seems to have settled the dispute, at least among her family. Willow unleashed a barrage of harsh letters on Luke, scolding him for his lack of wisdom and intransigence, insisting that true love is able to overcome any difficulties. She firmly stated her desire to break off relations with him, feeling ashamed and humiliated, not wanting to have anything more to do with him and telling him to go to hell. As a result, she lost the respect of her family and friends, and instead of attracting potential serious suitors looking for a serious relationship, she attracted only those who were looking for casual, short-lived meetings, in fact, one-night stands. After a while, Molly opened up to Luke, admitting that Willow began to understand the scale of her loss, because she had exchanged true love for an empty affair. Dennis often got into fights in the city when he crossed paths with Todd or one of Luke's friends. He was shunned by his usual friends and acquaintances, and in the end, he decided to move to the West. Meanwhile, Luke faced awkwardness, resentment, and awkward conversations after he sent a letter and canceled his wedding. Despite all this chaos, Luke found solace in the constant support of his family, especially when they learned that he had rejected Willow's offer to reunite through a physical relationship with her bridesmaid. But the biggest turning point occurred in the relationship between Luke and Linda, who, like him, was rejected by Willow. At first, Luke and Linda found solace in each other's company, going through the emotional turmoil associated with the loss of partners and close friends. Over time, their friendship developed into a strong love and commitment that they both truly deserved. Their marriage will be strong and lasting, marked by a deep sense of trust and loyalty. Their journey together promises a life full of love, friendship, and loyalty, which will only get stronger every day. When Willow found out about Luke and Linda's upcoming wedding, she drove up to Luke's house in a desperate state with a tire iron in her hands and brought his Harley to a piece of metal. Soon, Willow was taken to the police station. No one could stop her screams, Obscene statements led to the fact that she was later sentenced to six months in prison.